Hello everybody and welcome to my channel and uh, please uh, hit the like button and please subscribe it does help my channel and I appreciate you so much and you are a blessing well poor bakeries an American bakery is an unspecified location has given its customers and now the rest of the country a stark visual explanation of why the retail prices of baked goods have been going up so much this year. The sign is an indication that things could go very poorly for the Democrats in the next month's midterm elections as more voters find that disastrous Biden economic, economic economy, hello Betty, <laughs> I'll get there, is at the front of their minds as they consider who to vote for. The wholesale prices of some of the input goods show on the list have been more than doubled since Biden assumed office in January of 2021. Eggs alone have gone up from around $41 to more than $92 for the same quantity. As the Biden administration and the Democratic Congress has flooded the U.S. money supply with gargantuans, spending in the name of COVID relief, energy policies designed to destroy American independence have added a continuing energy crisis into the burning fire. Transportation costs are continuing to skyrocket as diesel prices remain at record levels. Diesel fuel was sitting at a nationwide average of $5.12 per gallon on Tuesday. That compares to $3.46 since just one year ago. Voters, market analysts, and the Federal Reserve are meanwhile bracing for this week's infla inflation reports from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. On Wednesday, the report on the September Producer Price Index, the PPI, will be released. And the Retail Oriented Customer Price Index, CPI, for last month coming out on Thursday. Analysts are expecting both numbers to go down somewhat from the August PPI from 8.7% to the CPI of 8.3%. A moderate decline will likely not be enough for the Fed to back away from its currently aggressive posture toward interest, interest rate hikes designed to tamp down the raging inflation hammering Americans. Most experts expect one or two more substantial interest rates increases before the end of the year. No doubt. What a mess we're in. The labor market has been flattening through the summer with still more than 10.1 million jobs open and unfulfilled. Currently, there are around 1.7 jobs available for every worker apparently seeking work. That could certainly encourage the Fed to continue to bump interest upward despite fears that a significant recession is coming, if not already here. Well, it's already here, you know. Now, you know, I have to say something here about uh, so many jobs to, to one person, whatever. You know, people that live in small towns, you know, and stuff, and they've got to have gas in their cars to get to bigger cities to apply for these jobs. People never mention that, you know. They never mention people living in, in smaller places. Now, if you want to go to the bigger cities, uh, like Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, Chicago, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, Alberta, Canada, or wherever, the bigger cities, well, people are going to find those jobs if they're looking. But when you get people in a smaller town, 30 or 40 or 50 miles from a bigger city, and the price of gas, how are they going to manage it? And, and you never hear anybody speak about the people that are in smaller cities, you know, how are they going to afford to pay for the gas to get to those bigger cities? And then are they going to have to, in order to save money, move their family, find a place to rent, in order to keep the job in the bigger cities, 
then there's more crime and country folk you know they want to raise their children in the right way not this big city living deal where there, there's all kinds of, of criminal activity all the time they don't want to raise their children around stuff like that nobody ever mentions that do they about the little towns where people live that need work why don't they see that these smaller towns get a small factory going or something to give those people a chance to get a job but nobody ever mentions that oh well on to the next one that's just my thoughts you know me <laughs> oh well all right and I just heard before I get to the next one here um, the babies and the smaller tiny children um, have come down with a respiratory disease now and I got to thinking to myself what if those babies was never out of their home how did they come down with this and none of the family members have got a cold sniffies or anything but these poor babies can't breathe and they're just flooding the hospitals now all over so where did that originate from is it seeping through our walls now is it already in the outside air and it's just it's really hitting high peaks here of the little tiny tots the little uh, babies newborns up to a year two three years old maybe even four years old yeah they're saying if, if your baby doesn't uh, if you don't change a diaper as often as you think you should and that baby can't breathe and can't eat at the same time and the nose is running and they got a fever you better get that baby to the ER because I've saw some pictures of babies on life support already so where where did that come from where where is that virus coming from and the mothers you know the children have been home they've never left their home they're not in school yet they're not in preschool it's hitting the little tiny ones now oh my goodness I you'll read about it it's on the internet you'll read about it it just makes you wonder what the hell else is going on that we don't know about well RNC catches Google suppressing conservative emails now I don't quite understand this part but uh, I'll read it to you and you probably already might have read it but the Republican National Committee RNC is exploring legal action against Google after alleging that the tech company suppressed more than 22 million campaign emails by diverting them to spam folders since September under pressure from Republicans Google which maintains the party affiliation has no bearing on which emails are routed to the spam bin implemented an FEC approved mechanism to guarantee that campaign my mailings enter users primary boxes inboxes however the RNC which provided Fox News Digital with statistic from its email campaigns claimed that this has not remedied the issue since large numbers of emails continue to be spammed by Google at the end of every month RNC chairman Rona McDonald McDaniel McDaniel sorry about that if I mispronounce that Rona McDaniel she's an RNC chairwoman claimed in a statement to Fox News that Google suppresses key GOTV and fundraising emails at the end of every single month like clockwork with no explanation or commitment from Google to resolve this issue with less than 40 days until election day critical GO TV emails to our opt-in voters in places with early voting already underway are being somatically sent to spam I wonder why that is and they've not done anything to correct it hmm 
Makes me wonder what's going on there, too, don't it? Since the University of North Carolina study revealed the Internet giant labeled 59.3% more emails from conservative candidates during the 2020 election as spam compared to liberal candidates, Google has been under fire for making political emails as spam. Jose Cast Castaria, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but the first name is Jose, and it's spelled the last name C-A-S-T-A-E-D-A. -E Castaria, a representative for Google, said there was no prejudice in how emails were sent to spam folders in a statement to Fox News, but he did not explain the odd pattern of the RNC emails being suppressed at the end of every month. We enable it for political committees and other groups to email their important key audiences, donors, and constituents. Politics or political affiliations have no role on whether we put emails in a spam folder when Gmail users request not to receive them, the spokesman added. The preceding is a summary of an article that originally appeared on BrittBart.com. I, I go there once in a while. But, uh, hmm. I don't know. My goodness. Kind of makes you think a little bit, don't it? Why haven't they corrected it, or can't they correct it? Or is there something going on that we haven't heard about yet? You know, it's kind of hard not to become suspicious anymore. The more you read and the more questions pop into your head, why is this happening? Where is it coming from? Did somebody do that on purpose? Like another rat? You never know. And you just keep thinking and then you say, well, whatever. We can't do anything about it. And you know, when I go to spam, uh, I barely glance through it. I get so much of it. Just so much of it. I just delete it as fast and quick as I can because I have to do my emails and do my videos and find my articles. I don't have time to go through each and every little tiny spam that I get. But it seems to me that somebody there that created the spam, which I wish they'd get rid of, because I'm sick of it, you know, and I think we all are, but whoever created it can't fix it. So most of the votes the voters are sending is going to spam, and people don't pay that much attention to spam. Anyway, I don't. I just delete it. I get so much of it. It overloads everything. Oh, well. Okay, people. Well, I've said my little piece again. <laughs> I hope you all have had a gorgeous day. It's chilly here. We are at 42 degrees right now, and we barely got over 45, 44 today, all day long. It's been chilly. My furnace is kicking on, and... Um, the wind has been windy, so that makes it a little bit more chillier, but it was a nice day, and uh, I'm so happy I woke up breathing <laughs> at my age, and uh, the kids have been fed, and, and they've played, and hopefully they won't cause too much commotion tonight while I keep doing my videos. <laughs> okay, just remember, you are a blessing. And I'll be back. Found my button here on my cam. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs>